Hey guys, time itself. I've got some Guild Wars 2 beta for footage for you, and this is the world versus world versus world. <laughs> uh, there's going to be uh, some explanation there required, isn't there? In this case, the different worlds are different servers for the different uh, player bases. So, things to note, there are three servers, obviously, is the three worlds against each other, kind of a cutthroat. And there are four areas, with each world having its own kind of home area. Those are all identical, though controlled by the different worlds, and they're just different colors. And then, then there's a central area, kind of the eternal battlegrounds, where everybody goes to try to slug it out together. <laughs> so, uh, there is a lot of space, and a lot of players, and a lot of crazy combat. It's something of a capture and hold the control points game type. You got the supply depots, the towers, the forts. There's even a castle. We'll take a look at that a little later. And the first thing I note, though, is that you can't see enemy player names. You just see their color and invader, or maybe defender, and if they're showing it, their guild tag. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, while I go out of my way to help players in my world, if they're in, if they're down, they need help. Here, it's kind of the opposite because there's really no fear of retribution. So I say the general internet theory of dickwads uh, definitely holds true. Nominity plus internet, yeah. And so I'll go out of my way to screw over enemy players. <laughs> it's a rather cutthroat game mode. But as far as game mechanics go, specific to this game mode, supply is kind of like a resource in an RTS game almost. It starts out in the supply depots. Players can carry a limited amount on them. It's also carried from the supply depots to the various outposts and towers and castles and whatnot via Doliac Caravan. It's this kind of woolly mammoth looking yak kind of thing. Now, disrupting enemy supply lines is definitely a useful tactic, and why wouldn't you want to do something called yak slapping? If the Doliac Caravan does make it to wherever it's going, it drops off its supply and it's stockpiled there, and players can pick it up and use it to either make more siege equipment or bolster their defenses. At this point, we should start talking about how long it takes to get certain things done. And the big one is, how long does it take to get across these giant zones? And I, I don't know, if, do you know your way or not? Is there a big-ass cliff you have to run around? But five plus minutes easily. And so if you have to get across, it could take a while. Now, there are waypoints on the map, but your team has to control them and they have to be uncontested. And it's not very hard to contest the point. In fact, you're often be looking at the waypoint going, all right, where is the combat? Because I'm sure I have teammates there, but there's somewhere that around there there's an enemy and it's keeping me from traveling fast traveling to the waypoint <laughs> it's really slow and that can be very aggravating not sure why you can't fast travel because it just running around isn't that much fun you looking for combat right on the other hand the places you can waypoint into are normally fairly fortified and if the enemies were trying to attack it well, they would not like it if defenders just suddenly started showing up. A lot of this does come down to trying to simply siege the various defensive structures, the towers and forts and whatnot. And so if people start teleporting in, that kind of defeats the point of the siege, doesn't it? <laughs> the reason the attackers can't just run in and take over is because these things all have fairly substantial gates in front of them. So that's the other thing this game mode is definitely going to get known for, is the war against the gates. Because uh, if you're doing well, and even if there are not many people defending, you still have to spend the time to take down the gates. And they're not coming down without a fight. If you have to take them down with just hand weapons, yeah, good luck, that's, that's going to be a while. And you do have to be kind of careful about trying to siege the place, because if more defenders manage to get past the line and into the structure, they could be carrying supply, and they can also just get up on the wall because there's definitely force multipliers. It's, again, sieging is kind of the idea because you have to wear down their supply. They can use the supply to build more siege weapons to fire back off of the walls, or they can just use it to repair the gate and make it take even longer. But the end result here means that defending or falling back to your tower is definitely a viable strategy. You don't have to keep running around trying to take things. Now, if you're trying to siege a castle, yeah, you need a large force you want to be with the mob, but if you're defending, if you've got some supply, you can build some siege weapons, and you can make life hell for the people who are trying to siege whatever little defensive structure you manage to take hold of. 
So that's what you see here. We had to fall back. We had been pushing their gates, and they'd pushed us back and kind of made a somewhat organized retreat back to the tower we had taken. And it didn't look so good for us, but I had some plans for an arrow turret. And we put it up here, and we got some teammates to put in some of their supply that they'd been carrying around with them. And we'll put it up, and <laughs> someone else managed to take control of it. I paid for it, but I didn't get to... Uh, anyway, and it's going to rain down arrows on the attackers, and... They don't want to stick around. This changes the title battle. We hop off the walls. And <laughs> yeah, so you got to be careful attacking because it could turn the tides pretty quickly. And we chase them down and kill them. <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that was fun. On the other hand, if you do have a larger force, if you do have siege equipment and you have lots of supply to build it with, there are still things that can slow you down. For example, if you've got a ram, you're going to want to wait until you've taken out the boiling oil that's just above the gate. They can That's always an option, apparently, for the defenders. They can put that up, and you don't want to bother building a ram until you've taken care of that, because you're still completely vulnerable while using the ram. Uh, also, using siege equipment, um, the stuff that's not targeted, like the ram, where you push the button every five, so yeah, that's kind of boring. I hope they turn that into an auto attack like most of the other one button stuff is. It's, uh, sitting there pushing one every five seconds. While you try to take down the gate and while they keep repairing it is kind of boring. And so you also have to be paying attention to your health the entire time because if you need to get off the ram and then scurry away and try and heal yourself and leave the ram and hopefully come back and try to... Yeah, that you have to be paying attention but it's also kind of tedious. Um, I'm not sure what they can do about that. That's, that's how it goes. In the end, I think one of the things is that the open field battles, it simply comes down to who has more players and who can bring more reinforcements to the fight. It's really... Uh, no one's really good at the game yet, and I uh, we'll do a separate commentary about general PvP, and I'll have to look up some more stuff. But right now, it's mostly just who can bring more bodies to the fight, which I guess is always going to be true for the most part, isn't it? Alright, let's close things off with defending the central castle. We've managed to build up all of the armaments around the outside on the top level of this castle, and they are mean. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be hard for them to take anything unless they just happen to find no one home or they find some way to take this stuff out. Mortars are kind of challenging to use. Cannons are much more intuitive and much easier to target. Mortars are, have a little bit more punch, but I, I'm going to take my cannon for now. So, uh, I've noticed that they're coming in from the north, and, uh, you know, I'll just hop on this cannon here, and, you know, okay, we don't have a whole lot in the way of defense, and they have a long way to go to break through that gate, but there are still a lot of guys down there, but just this cannon alone, this is mean. <laughs> yeah, you just a simple click, point, and lots and lots of numbers. If you see invulnerable, it's because uh, they just went down or they just got, they just stood up. <laughs> yeah, so um, single-handedly gonna push most of them back and we get a little more help here with the burning oil to the area I can't quite hit. Uh, you know, a couple more people get up on the walls because they can actually see where the attacking force is coming in here. Now again, they can't teleport in on the waypoint that's in the middle of this castle but it doesn't take many defenders. <laughs> Not if you have these defenses up. And, uh, yeah, they are, they're not getting in here anytime soon. <laughs> With this whole three-world free-for-all, they've really made it so it, it feels like the battle is always going on and you never know where the next skirmish is going to break out. On the other hand, if you spent a long time taking a, a tower or something, and you come back to find that you've lost it, it can be really frustrating. Uh, so that's that's just how it goes, I guess, but uh, trying to stay on top of everything, run all around the map, it gets to be really hard, and you never quite know where everything is, and it's a little bit disorganized. Like I said, you just find the mob and try to run with them, and, well, if there are defenders with cannons on top of the castle walls, uh, too bad. <laughs> I actually managed to found a, find a way to jump down there without killing myself. But let's go loot some bodies. <laughs> I probably won't find much of value. It's, uh, it gets to be a little bit tedious dealing with the inventory. It's the, the badges of honor, I think you get a whole bunch of those. You can get something, but I'm not going to manage to get enough in this weekend event. So, you know, who cares, whatever. Uh, it's mostly for just for buying more siege, siege equipment plants at this point. <laughs> I get a lot of experience and whatnot for all the other stuff. Anyway, guys, I want to thank you for watching. Get some more Guild Wars 2 content out later this week, and I'll see you later. 
Yeah, let's go slap this yak around. <laughs> I don't know why this is so amusing, but throwing a couple ton beast around with a giant bubble? Yeah, sure, why not? 